It's amazing. Episode 20. I can't believe we've come this far so quickly already. I've been having so much fun creating this series for you, and it's my hope that it's bringing you as much enjoyment as it does to me. If you enjoy this series and you know anybody else who might get a kick out of it, then please send them the playlist and help my channel grow. We are so close now to the end of InfDev and making our way into Alpha. So for episode 20, I wanted to take a bit of a look back over the journey through the different versions we've taken. And by the end of this episode, we're going to be on Alpha. So let's wind back the clock. We started this journey on RD132211, the very earliest development version of this game, where Minecraft at that point was just known as Cave Game. These very early versions were never released publicly at the time, but made available much later. And at this point, the game was extremely basic, going through several early iterations before becoming known as Minecraft, Order of the Stone, and then finally, just Minecraft. This early version also introduced the human mob, which appeared and disappeared a few times, but ultimately never made it into the final survival game. From here, Minecraft then moved into what we now call the classic era, starting with version 0.011a. It added trees and flowers, water and sponges, glass and gold blocks, as well as the 16 colour cloth blocks, which later went on to become wool. At this stage, Minecraft was still entirely creative. But partway through this classic era, at version 0.24, the game suddenly started changing direction. The game's version was now called Survival Test, and the gameplay switched from creative to survival mode. During this phase, we got our first introduction to hostile mobs, the creeper, the zombie, skeletons and spiders. It's amazing to think that these primary mobs that have been in the game since the very beginning are still there today, and still some of the most commonly encountered mobs, and yet they're still largely unchanged. We also got the pig and the sheep, the very first passive mobs. During survival test, Minecraft also started introducing us to ores that we would have to search for and mine for, specifically coal, iron and gold. But as quickly as survival test came, it was gone. By version 0.30, we were back to creative mode with all of the mobs removed. Version 0.31 kicked off a new phase of Minecraft's development, known as InDev. InDev was short for in development, and around this time the player would spawn on a single island surrounded by an infinite ocean. Your player would start off by spawning in the very basic in-dev house, which was often provided with chests of goodies depending on which version you happen to be playing. At this stage of its development, there were plenty more creative twists to come. The newest set of mobs were introduced, which were completely different to anything we'd seen before. Rana, the girl wearing a frog suit, was the first to be introduced. Soon to follow were the two Steve mobs and Beast Boy. It's fairly clear that these strange looking mobs that never quite fit into the game were never going to become its future, and they were cut entirely from the game and our old favourites eventually returned, the zombie, the skeleton, creepers and spiders. Minecraft also started adding basic functionality at this point, like smelting ores with your flint and steel and eventually replacing this with furnaces. A new crafting system was added and tools that could be made from different materials that would work more effectively depending on what you made them from. The cog was also introduced into the code, but it was never put into the gameplay. This was arguably the first step towards automation and machinery, which would later be introduced as redstone mechanics. It also introduced the emerald block, which was renamed very quickly to diamond. Unfortunately, we never managed to find one of these during this era of the game, due to the fact that we'd already generated our entire island world before they were actually added. During InDev we also got basic farming introduced, although it was only for wheat at this stage, but it was a start. Around this time, living, working and building on a single island really wasn't sustainable. At the end of the InDev era, Minecraft started growing, and growing, and growing. The game's world generation switched from a single island to an infinitely generated terrain, and the game moved into its InfDev era, a little play on words from InDev, where inf just means infinite. The infinite terrain generation took the game right back to its basics, and most of the features that had already been developed needed to be re-added to these versions over time. 
Because of the new terrain generation format, upgrading wasn't possible and we had to abandon our old world. But for the developers, experimenting with this world format meant that we got to see a lot of the developmental testing process exposed. Huge pyramids were added to test early structure generation, but were then removed in the next version. The obsidian walls were also added briefly, which extended off infinitely in the four cardinal directions, but again, these were also removed. The game was exceptionally buggy around this time, and most of the features were being re-added very quickly. I was experiencing a lot of game crashes, and it was not really possible for me to do anything sustainable in these versions. By InfDev 2010.04.15, however, the game had introduced an updated terrain engine and a new world save format, and we, in this series, were finally able to get started in a survival world that we would be able to keep playing in, forever, we hope. We experimented with old mechanics like it was all new again, like collecting food, surviving against the night and building a shelter. But the mobs were impossible at this stage, forcing us to upgrade quickly to 2010.04.20 where the mob spawning had been reduced. This version also tweaked the terrain engine making it less mountainous, and that meant that we were able to see our very first terrain generation discrepancies at the chunk borders. We travelled out to the edge of the previously known world and found giant cliffs at the edges of the previously generated chunks. This is something that I think we'll have to come to get used to over the progression of Minecraft in this world, simply because the terrain generation changes again and again and again. But it's all part of the experience and all part of the journey. During InfDev we got doors, we got signs and ladders, buckets for lava and water, and we even found our very first diamonds. We went caving and started exploring our new infinite world, and we made our first cobblestone generator, sort of. Version 2010.06.18 was the first of a series of Secret Friday releases. The first one gave us minecarts and rails. We discovered that when these minecarts were first introduced, they had their own inventory, which meant you could fill them up with all sorts of materials, and the minecart would change its appearance based on how much was put inside the minecart. In version 2010.06.25-2, the second Secret Friday update, we got the addition of dungeons and spawners. Three types were introduced, the zombie, skeleton, and spider spawners. This was an exciting reason for us to go and head out into the wilderness and explore the world. Eventually we found two dungeons right next to each other and got started on building our first string farm, followed by our first arrow farm. And here we are almost at the end of InfDev and moving on to Alpha. Though it gets a little weird here. Let me cruise through and I'll explain. First, let's upgrade ourselves. To InfDev 2010.06.29. This is the last version of the InfDev phase which adds new features. And in this version, it adds wood and cobblestone stairs. So let's take a bit of a look. Now we don't have an official uppy downy for this area, except for this at the moment. Well actually there are a few different entrances, but this is the one which goes straight up here, turns around, and then goes back up that way to the main central area. So why don't we install a nice staircase and make this a little bit easier for ourselves. I've got myself some cobblestone, I'm going to take a guess at the recipe, I'm pretty sure we can all guess what it is. Oh look at that, look at that icon. Not really what I was expecting for cobblestone stairs. Let's get ourselves a couple of stacks, maybe three stacks, because we have so much cobblestone, it's ridiculous. Let's get those together. Yeah, look at that. Huh. I can't wait to see what the wooden one looks like. We'll pick that back up. And I suppose we'll just go over the top of what we already have. Oh, oh. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to clear this out as I go. So let me lay this staircase down, and then we're going to give it a test run. Installed. Ready to go? I want to see how much faster this is, and oh, that's much quicker, and so effortless. Oh, there was a little weird thing here where the stairs think they need to join each other in opposite directions. Oh, maybe I'll show you afterwards, but oh yeah, up and down, up and down. Let's try that upwards, because upwards where you have to jump is so annoying. Oh, that's so fast, so, so fast. I've got myself some wood as well so we can have a quick look at the oak stairs, but I don't think that they'll be very exciting. I don't have as much oak wood to go around, so I'm just going to make a few. I knew the texture would be the same, but I think that that's a really cool looking texture, something that I haven't quite seen before. And if we put these stairs just, oh yeah, see that's what I mean about the weird 
joining going on. It doesn't quite know what it's doing, but it looks exactly like oak stairs should, and it works just like oak stairs should as well. Now we've got a couple of other things on the list that we need to check out in the inf dev versions, some things that have been on the list for a little while that we haven't got to. So I wanna really cruise through, th through those so that we can get to alpha. Look at that beautiful oceanic view, which we're about to ruin. Now, one of the things I wanted to experiment with before the changes were made was the build height. I was pretty sure in this version that there is no build height, or at least I don't know how high it is. Now, we know that the ground here is at a height of 64. And although in these early versions, we don't have coordinate numbers or Y levels, so we can't really measure how high we are, assuming that we know that this is 64 and we're out, we have stacks of cobble that are 64 as well, we can calculate how high the build height is. So I need to get stack jumping, which doesn't seem to work too well in these versions. It's kind of slow. And from the amount of cobble that we place, we can work out exactly how high we can go before the game stops us from being able to place blocks anymore. So let me do this for a while and see how high I can get. That is stack number one. So we are at 128. Let's see how much higher we can go. Oh, that's it. That's the limit. Now, I remember reading in the release notes that there was a build height limit enforced, but I didn't think it was yet. I thought it was coming up. Maybe I'll have to do some research. That's a pity. I wanted to really get a pillar as high as I could and see what would, what the world would look like. Oh man, I'm regretting not building this out of gravel. Look at that in my hot little hands. It's our saddle. We found that when we found the spider spawner for the first time, it was in one of the chests and we just put it away and I forgot about it. And I'm not sure what we can do with this because the only mobs that I know you can put a saddle onto are mobs like donkeys and horses, which don't exist yet, and pigs. And I really don't know if you can ride pigs in this version, but I'm willing to look for a pig and see what we can find out. Hey sheep, can I saddle you? No. Hey pig, come here. Can I saddle you? I can saddle you. Oh, amazing, amazing. Take me for a ride. Come on, let's go. Yes, <laughs> I can't control you at all, but hey, get out of that tree. No, no, <laughs> ow, ow, all the branches, ow, the branches, ow, they're they getting in my face, ow, ow. Oh, I'm getting all scratched. Uh, so where else are you gonna take me, piggy? <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to have to put you in a hole so you don't despawn. I hope you don't despawn because this is the only saddle I've got. Oh, it's getting night time. What am I going to do with you? Well, this is an interesting turn of events. I appear to be able to ride the pig, but I can't get off the pig. At least I'm pressing shift. I'm pressing spacebar. I'm pressing control. I think the only thing I've got left is punch. Oh, no. No. Oh, <laughs> this, this feels so wrong. And all I got was a pork chop. I didn't even get my saddle back. Well, at least we know what to expect now. Sorry, piggies. I suppose it's fortunate it is night time because at least you can see exactly what we have in front of us. Over here is the pillar that I made to denote exactly where our spider spawner is. And over here is the little one where the skeleton spawner is. Now these two are pretty close together, but what I have found in caving and exploring this area is that if we follow a direct line underneath me and across this way and then head out in that direction, that pig pillar there is another spider spawner. Now I haven't gone into it yet and I haven't, I haven't rummaged through the chests. I want to do that with you. But I also found under here in these caves, I haven't marked it with a pillar, but somewhere just in here is a zombie spawner. Now I'm not going to bore you by making a zombie spawner after having just made a spider spawner and a skeleton spawner. That's too many spawners for too many episodes, but we will come back to the zombie spawner in a few episodes time, sometime in the future, I'm sure. But what I want to do here is just point out that it's interesting that the three spawners like this have all lined up in a straight line. And I wonder if that has something to do with the way that the game calculates where to put dungeons. Who knows? But for now, we're just going to run underground and check out the spawner here and here and see if we can get some loot. 
here it is. We're just a few blocks under the surface really, probably 10 blocks down. So this is incredibly close to the surface. Now I haven't had a chance to look inside the chest, so... Oh, that's pretty boring, isn't it? Three buckets. Effectively, a piece of bread and some leftover seeds. Some string, which we have, and tons of gunpowder we already have. You, my chesty friend, you are no good. Look at that hole I've had to come down. This one is considerably lower down than the zombie spawner. But look, I came in here when I first discovered it and I threw some torches down really quickly just so we wouldn't have to come back and face any of the beasties. But we have two chests in this one, so I'm excited to see what's inside. Ready? Chest number one. <laughs> okay, some bread, an iron ingot, some more string, which we have loads of, and another unstackable... I've got no room left. Another unstackable bucket. <laughs> Let's see what we have in chest number two. Wait, wait, let me just get excited. Let's see what we have in chest number two. Oh, another saddle. I am excited about that. That replaces the one that we lost, at least. More bread, which I still can't stack. <laughs> Why can't you stack bread? I don't know. We'll just take the ingot and the bucket. They're the things that are most useful to us. We'll get rid of you, Gravel, and... I kind of want sticks, but there's only three there. That's okay. Goodbye, spiders. I need to... Whoa. 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 What are you all doing? It's good that their AI is a bit broken right now and they don't know how to jump. <laughs> Suckers. I'm just heading home and I want to show you something really weird. If you jump into F5 mode... Oh, there's no rain particles now. But over here, and only over there... There's rain particles. I'm really confused. They seem to follow me as well. I don't really understand what's going on. And then if I head out of F5 mode, there's no rain particles anymore. But did you notice how it only seemed to happen in a certain area up here at this level? It didn't happen at all? That's a bizarre bug. I don't know when that was introduced. I've only just noticed it in the last few minutes. Hey, piggy. Head stuck in a block? <laughs> you silly little pig. Do you feel any different? You're an alpha pig now. Officially, we are in Minecraft Alpha 1.0.0. And even though up in the top left corner, it says Minecraft InfDev, and we're running InfDev 2010-06.30, technically speaking, we're running Minecraft Alpha. And the reason for that is that the next version that comes out is called Minecraft Alpha 1.0.1. And when that version was released, Notch said in his blog that he would retcon this version of Minecraft and make it officially Alpha 1.0.0. So that's it. Officially, this is Alpha 1.0.0. And in the next series of episodes, we can start exploring all of the new content that Alpha has to bring by upgrading to the very first and next available Alpha version we have. Because the version we're running right now, it only contained bug fixes, and that's kind of boring. So I can't wait to explore the Alpha region, Alpha era of this game, and I hope you'll be along with me for that ride so we can explore it together. And if you've enjoyed today's content, then I hope you'll please leave a thumbs up and a comment if you want to say hello or give me any feedback. I really love to see them. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe for more content like this. There's a link to Discord down in the description below if you just want to come and join us and hang out. And I want to thank you again for staying around and joining me on these episodes and enjoying watching them while I enjoy making them. So until next time, this has been Bugman CX. You've been watching Minecraft The Journey. Bye bye. <laughs>